let's kick this off. I think, uh, according to the timing, we're just in time. I hope we had a pleasant morning. Uh, I like the key keynote because um, it was about contribution. And this session here is also a way of contribute. Um, and actually, I kicked this whole idea around Git Core off back in 2015 at the DrupalCon in Barcelona. That was just an idea. I said, ah, I need to work on the prototype. And somehow I got distracted with something people call work. And uh, I still had the idea around carrying it for one year. And finally, at the Drupal camp in Munich at, uh, in December last year, I decided, okay, when this, the coolest camp is happening in Iceland, I will be there and I wanted to present group time. And so this is how this kicked off. Quick question to the room. Uh, do you expect a technical session? <laughs> or do you expect some technical session? Please raise their hand. Okay, that's very good. Uh, just two hands because this is about an idea, about the concept. I have a prototype with me, which I wanted to demonstrate today. Um, but it's more about kicking something off and to tell you what uh, experience we made in Iceland. So, briefly about me. My name is Ruben Volk. I'm a solutions architect at Acquia. Um, however, this is a private project of mine, so there's nothing uh, which is related to the company behind that. And part of uh, my background is I have been a software developer for many years. I worked with uh, Triple Six, Seven, and now Eight. <coughs> but I'm not, not that deep into coding anymore. Roughly since two years, I'm working more in pre-sales uh, level, speak a lot about Drupal, try to contribute and uh, help organizing events and win more people uh, for the Drupal community. Um, you can find my profiles on those public uh, domains, feel free um, to follow me on Twitter because this is where I keep people posted on about GitHub. So, let's kick it off with <coughs> the basic vision. So we are in Frankfurt today and uh, Frankfurt is an amazing city. They have tall skyscrapers, uh, many people who live here, unfortunately the writers in this room is a bit Troublesome, but the basic idea or the basic recognition I made is that the world is amazing. We achieve so much through technology. First of all, we started in the past by building things, then technology helped us to improve this, and now we build skyscrapers to reach for the sky. But one thing which always kept in my mind was uh, something that Elon Musk said many years ago. So, do you know Elon Musk? He probably heard of the founder of Tesla and SpaceX. So he's always preaching something about first principles thinking. Which means, the things you know, when you want to improve them, boil them down to the things you really know, which are for sure, and everything else you should put into question. I think if you are on the right track. So, according to this, I try as many times as possible to see things from a different perspective. And it's something which I want to do today to get with you. So what happens when you change the perspective? What you can see here on this picture is a small capsule up at the ISS, the International Space Station, and it's not in the reverse order, it's not uh, mirrored here, but actually this, uh, this window over there is looking down to Earth. And we, when we look through this window, we can use technology of today to see the world from different angles. So this is our world, how it looks from remote. And as you can see, we don't see skyscrapers, we don't see the internet or technology at all. So when we take a step back and try to see the big picture, this helps us actually to think about the context of the world we are in. And this is what I did with GitHub. So what can we learn from that? Actually, while we think about space and the International Space Station, this is a great analogy for Drupal. Because Drupal itself is highly modular with contributions all around the world. Of course, we're not flying to space with our technology, but the passion, the contribution is quite similar. Because the ISS has to be stable up there, people need to rely on that, and this is also happening in the software industry. So websites need to rely on technology underneath, partially Drupal. And one of those uh, <coughs> things where Drupal takes care of is this whole world module stuff. How do we bring features uh, into websites, how do we contribute modules, and so on. And 
to achieve something like the ISS, you have to run it once. You need to prepare staff. You at least have it to send them out. And once they are there, the rest becomes easy as in specs walk. <coughs> they just attach it to an existing system, and just exactly how it works with uh, Drupal in our ISS system. Once the work is done, people return to Earth and think about the next release package. We are quite good in doing releases with Drupal. There are plenty of projects taken care of continuous delivery. Uh, we have options available which help us to deploy modules, deploy configurations. But when it comes to content, I think this is always a bit troublesome. So the question to the room, who of you guys have issues with deploying content from stages into your life? So I <coughs> because I, I have the same problem. And this is exactly where the idea of GitPal came from. So in Drupal 8, we learned that when we take the best of three technologies out of the web, stuff like Symfony, in the past jQuery, SAS, and so on, YAML forms, we take a lot of existing technologies which haven't been invented by the Drupal community itself. So taking this into account, the idea about Git call was <coughs> what happens if we would be able to apply version control to content? I mean, I assume all of you are aware of uh, the revision controls in Drupal, and there are some challenges around that. Let's be clear about that. Uh, so it's really hard to bring content from one system to another. There are a couple of different solutions available, but when it comes to version control, actually, when we think about it from a coding perspective, Git puts into us into a position where we have high control, high visibility of code. So what is code? Code is text. Code is content. And so what happens when we combine Git with Drupal, but from a user perspective? When people which work in Drupal could write the content in a node, in an end kind of entity in a blob, and Drupal takes care of putting this in the background into a Git repository. This would change a couple of things. So the basic idea is to provide an API to Drupal, so it has a background module in the beginning, um, which allows us to apply this version control we already have in place. Yeah? So Drupal allows us to utilize existing APIs to put something underneath without taking or recognized by the user. So this would put us in a position where we could actually benefit from all the branching, merging, and so on we are already aware of Git. Yeah? And actually, it's not, no matter if you use Git, Sakura, or whatever, but Git is a really good fit here because there's a huge adoption. And when it comes to the implementation, yeah, we need to think about what can we achieve today with Drupal's revision system. So there's a lack of features. For example, we don't have change sets. Every time we save the content or a new revision in Drupal, it creates a full new copy of that. You can do divs between both versions, but it's like it's a full div every time. It's suitable for most cases, but when it comes to uh, blaming actions, when you want to figure out who contributed this piece of content in my article, there's no, oh, no, no real option to figure this out, no easy way or performant way, like we have in Git, like we could do with source code. Also, we have no option to use branches, to test content in a branch, and then putting it somewhere. Just imagine, for a moment, you have a Drupal website, like a station system, and all your content will be locked in a Git repository underneath, so you don't need to worry about that. You just work in Drupal, and then you have a production system which access the same master branch of this content. So you could bring content from one system, so an easy push and pull mechanism we already have in Git into other sites. And you could actually decide what you want to do with that, because then when people work in different systems with content, usually there are conflicts occurring. And this puts us in a situation where we can think about merging, because Git is very good in merging. They have all the tools available. So let's try to bring this into Drupal. And so the formula for this project is basically GitHub, is just Drupal 8 combined with Symfony, I believe, to access Git. So I don't reinvent the wheel here. Actually, I'm not a Drupal 8 developer at all because my last project was Drupal 7. So it was kind of uh, troublesome for me to figure out all this new symphony stuff and so on and so on. 
But using existing components out of the box, I achieved something uh, which is a prototype, and I want to quickly introduce you to that. So let's switch to my web browser, and as you can see here, I prepared a really simple Drupal 8 installation where Git palette is running in the background. Um, so of course I created a module for that, and the idea is just hook underneath into existing uh, mechanisms. So don't create a UI, just a technical proof of concept. So what happens here? Let's let's see um, how this works. I add new content. I start with an article, and I call it uh, "It's Demo Time in Frankfurt." So that's <coughs> the um, Let's add some content. Some content over multi lines, because when it comes to dipping, we want to have something visible, like where people can, or where you can see uh, how it's changed. Um, Drupal's entity uh, model has a couple of fields attached to that. So when you want to, or when you want to achieve storing an entity, a content type whatsoever in a Git repository, we need to convert it somehow. Drupal 8 puts us in a position where we could use the entity API to create an export of an entity, no matter how the entity is structured. So all the fields could be exported into a JSON format, for example, um, and we could take this JSON into the file system. So let's try this. I add a revision log here. Uh, this is my first commit. And I just save this node. So as you can see, there's nothing special. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is standard people. But what happened in the background is kind of uh, interesting because uh, this module <coughs> goes into the file system. Um, so I have a site directory here. Uh, yeah, there's a mm. default, and in the default files uh, directly, they, they are added a private file directory because you don't want to have a Git repository in a public file directory for sure. Um, Can you press <laughs> Command Plus a few times? Oh, absolutely! Thank you. Better? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's no time. So when we look into the pri private files directory, we can see that the Git core directory is blue. And within this, GitPal created us an uh, architecture of directories here. So we are in the Git repository right now. And for the prototype, I just took the content type for subdirectories. This is a node in this example. This could be also this here. Um, but it creates subdirectories according to the content type to the entity type. So when I look into the node folder, I get a couple of JSON exports, which utilize the UUID of the content element. And every entity has such a UUID out of the core in Drupal 8. So Drupal 8 is really uh, suitable for this uh, prototype here. Um, so I can see the git log, I can work with git here, and I can see uh, there is something which is my first commit. And we could also go into details and see uh, how those files look. Um, or I just take any file, and we can see there's a JSON export of the entity. So Drupal 8 is capable of exporting content and importing content. So I just used a uh, feature um, to work with that. So let's go back to Drupal. Because once we brought the content into a Git repository, we can work with that. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the basics uh, I thought about is, OK, let's track some changes. So I just hook into the mechanism behind create new position, and when I disable this and uh, change the content here, for example, I make this bold and save this one, it stores this information also in my Git repository. So in Git status, we should have a modified file now. Since I did not create a new position, the system is not committing this content, which means when I look into that, I can <coughs> see there is my uh, entity export. Here is the change. Here's a strong, which we just added in the UI. But it's not, uh, yeah, it doesn't have changed. Um, so we can see there's a dis available. 
And so it's quite easy to map this gear, uh, git div into my editor experience. As I said, it's a prototype, but I can just use a Drupal message dialog to say, okay, here are some changes ongoing, so we can keep track of that. Um, and this also allows us to uh, get very detailed uh, insights like what actually changed. This is not pretty, but the mechanics are there. So when we take this prototype and take it race to the next level, we would be able to utilize the functionalities within Drupal. Questions so far? Yeah. We import the object of the node and save it as a uh, Yes. So, so uh, when an object gets saved, yeah, I create an export, put it in the file system, and only when the new revision is checked, it will commit the change we get. The interpretation is the, the structure is from the object, so you can modulate the modulate that object. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what we can do is actually we could go into a content configuration right now, add an additional field, bring this field into the node, save the node, and we will be able to see the change in the Git export. Um, Question? Mm -hmm. So um, do you have like um, an import already also like in place, no? <laughs> We have exactly the same <coughs> question at the Kudus camp uh, ever, oh. which was I said, sorry, this so was is a trademark. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, I introduced this prototype in Iceland, yeah, and we have exactly the same question. How about import? How could this work? Well, um, nodes, you know, where it's like you have one system already created the UID and you yeah. um, so there's no branch included yet. Git has plenty of models, yeah, it's not part of the prototype. But what happens when we uh, go to the file system? Um, so here's a git edit. Here's a file we just changed. Let me take this and modify the UUID, so the UUID is not, uh, sorry, copy. So I, I just create a copy of the file, modify the UUID, and change also the UUID in the file. So let's assume this is just pulled from a Git repository. Yeah. Um, sorry. So I can take this UUID and could go to git to uh, do the import. So I added a really simple uh, git pair module setting here, where we have some test functions available, which do stuff like initializing the git repository when you want to install the module. And there are also some hidden uh, routines available. So since we had the question in Iceland, we created uh, as part of a call sprint an update to the module, which is right now in sandbox mode. And we can see here that there is an option for git pad into the import entity. And when I take this, and let's see how it looks. Um, here it is. It's basically that way. So git pad import content type is in that case a node. And the UUID is available back here. Let's see what happens. And maybe we should change the content up front and add some custom code here along with title with the demo in Frankfurt, import. So when everything goes right, we should have an, a note imported in a second. It's the import. Node 92 was created, and when we look into that, we got a new node out of the Git repository. How do you like that? <laughs> um, as we had in the keynote already mentioned today, or we he heard that, contributions is not about creating something new, it's about inspiring people. And um, as I said, I'm not a great Drupal 8 developer, so this was pretty ugly. Um, so when you look into the code base of uh, GitPal, which is public available, um, it's really an ugly prototype, which doesn't really respect uh, the benefits of Symfony 2. But I will come back to that uh, again. So we have seen the prototype, and before I tell you what happened in Iceland, I wanted to continue with the presentation. So what we have seen is how GitPal works in the background, 
and how powerful it already is out of the box without having, uh, even having a UI. Um, the perspective for this could be that we utilize the library in the least. So if the, basically the module, we could look into that, uh, but I take it as a Q&A part at the end of the session, how the module is structured. Um, there is a Symfony 2 library to map uh, Git into PHP, so it's available in Symfony. <coughs> um, I created a simple module, uh, Triple Eight, which implements or uh, basically yeah, refer to this library. So it's really straightforward. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. So this was put, put us into a position where we could have an enterprise grade version control system and then content for approval. What does it mean? Uh, to put it into context, um, after we are paid to go out to large enterprise accounts which have really high requirements in terms of content. So for them, the revision module uh, of uh, Drupal is not really sufficient because they want something um, which they call archiving. So some of our clients have the challenge that uh, the content needs to be archived for 10 years. Today's world is a bit different because in the past they just took like an export of the website, like the HTML export, made a picture of the app, and put it into an archiving system. Today's world consists of dynamic pages, especially with Google 8. So every user could have a different experience, but they still have the uh, liability to put their content versions into some kind of archive system. Taking GitPal, we have plain export of the content, which is relevant when it comes to the core for those clients. Um, so it would be possible to take a still a snapshot of the website and have full control over the entity exports which we store on Git. And storing Git somewhere, making a uh, backup of Git, seeing who contributed which content, mm -hmm. blaming people would be possible. So content staging would be the second benefit. As, I, as we already mentioned, we could have a master branch, so I'm just working with the local Git repository here. Once I connect this to any Git repo, which could be on my server, or on uh, GitHub, or Bitbucket, or uh, wherever, we could actually work with this content wherever we like. So if you have a JavaScript application, and you could connect to this Git repository, it's a JSON file. Just take the content show it in your mobile app, so you don't need to worry about that. This is something which we achieve with Drupal today, but in a, in a company internal perspective, it might be really interesting to work with content somewhere else. Because this is not Drupal specific anymore, it's just a field then used. We would have changed that, and we could merge content. So we could have contributors for individual <coughs> systems, or uh, different regions, different countries, they could co contribute to a cent uh, central content repository. And, of course, uh, we can take the content storage even beyond Drupal. We can bring content from everywhere and let Drupal import it. And as we are aware of, this JSON export contains a set of fields. And this might be uh, not um, co uh, compatible with the current configuration of our content type. But what happens when you have a local field which is missing from JSON uh, file? And Drupal is taking care of that because uh, the entity API has default values, so it just takes what it can to get. But it doesn't really create conflict if you still have the control of making decisions. So when there's a conflict occurring, Git warns us already. So we just need to create a new UI, and there are UI component components available like this in Drupal, where we could just leverage um, the description. So working with this content in the shell, yeah, we could isolate content, and we could be the first content management <laughs> system out in the world which has something awesome like that. WordPress doesn't have it. Type 3 doesn't have it. But they could use the same technology to embed it in their system. We are first. Um, so, what's next? We have uh, definitely, or I have the challenge. So, first of all, I had this idea back in Barcelona. So, I thought I need to communicate about that because I can see some people knocking their heads. And we had the same situation in Iceland. Like, this could be useful. It's an actual prototype today. But when we uh, put it onto the next stage together, when we can get some contributors, which say, okay, I might have a use case for that, or I like to play around with that, just to give some feedback, uh, to put it in the field set, this would be really appreciated. Mm -hmm. So if we can find any volunteers, just let me know. Um, we have to discuss best approach. Is JSON the right format? Maybe yes, maybe not. We have the discussion ongoing um, if we should use Jamal, for example. Yeah. But we need a format which is suitable for Git dipping, of course. Um, 
we need to define the basic set of UI elements because when we put this into production somewhere, I don't want to use a Drupal message dialog to show them, hey, there's an exchange ongoing. <coughs> um, so I could imagine that we just extend the existing revision control, put git pad underneath, and so for the UI, it's no different in the beginning, but we could all already benefit and play around with this as a very uh, product. The best repository um, architecture for the directory is still an open question. Yeah. For the prototype, we use the content type, and then we put in the usual ideas you are seeing. But of course, there are different scenarios. So actually, I want to have this uh, configurable in the back end. Um, we can look into the details of the module uh, in a few minutes, what is already there and how it looks. Um, but we have definitely to think about what are the next steps. What do we need when we have a system like that available? For example, automation. Yeah. What happens when there uh, is a cron which pulls an update from a remote repository? Can we automate that? Could we utilize Google rules, for example, to say, okay, when an update is there and we can apply it automatically, perfect, publish it, whatever, or create a draft, notify an editor. Or we could think about, hey, there's an update, uh, I have local changes, there are changes coming from the remote repository which create a conflict. So I could send an email out to someone who is able to resolve that. We could do it on Git, and we could do it in the UI. Mm -hmm. So, let me tell you something about Iceland. What we can see or can't see here is the Northern Lights. And uh, we try a lot to see them actually, but in this picture, it's not from me, it's uh, from a public source, uh, we have not the luck uh, to see them, unfortunately. Uh, but we have uh, all different weather zones, so this was amazing. Um, so I have a similar session. You can find the slides on GitHub and all. Um, and the people who have been in the room said, okay, I have a question here. I want to do that. Um, one of those was Michael Hyde. And I'd like to mention him here uh, because he said, after we had a look into the module, it's a great idea. I see a lot of potential, but there's a step in being all the triple A way. So I learned a lot from that. So I made prompts to him. I will provide the import function, yeah, as part of the phone sprint in Iceland. And he said, well, that's pretty cool. I see a commitment. So he took my module and refactored. So you can find a refactored version of this module already uh, in the sandbox repository. And I didn't uh, pay him for anything. He was just excited, like, okay, I like to contribute, and I wanted to put it into action. So he is based in Boston. Yeah. And uh, he took this uh, piece to the local user group in Boston. So he's spreading the word. So it was something which had its start in Barcelona, was introduced in Iceland, and now it's taken in track. So uh, we established, for example, <coughs> a Slack channel where you could join, where we can have discussions. Um, and here's a pledge I made for this Ken. I wanted to take his reflective code, and I wanted to make it as a module available. So right now it's just a sandbox. There were some changes lately in the Google Org uh, community which allows to have now um, yeah, module release. So I want to take this prototype and um, yeah, bring it to the next level. So anybody who is interested in that, having a look into the details, uh, is really welcome to join me here for the talk sprint. And the big question is, I, I really would like to understand how does success look for you? So the purpose of this talk is just to share the idea, to inspire some of you, and maybe one or two say, maybe I'd, I'd like to test somewhere, maybe in a dev project somewhere else. But the big question is really, what do you want to achieve with content? I know mm -hmm. all of us, over the last years, we have pain points with content in Google. There are different solutions out there. And I'm really looking forward to get some ideas of what you like to achieve how a system like that could help you. And when you think about the first step on the moon, everybody knows this picture, everybody has heard about it. But what we don't know is, how does this technology actually work with products there? I know there's a spaceship, but I thought this is rocket science. So most, for most people which work with content, this is pretty similar. They just want to bring their content to life in a reliable, stable, quality assured. 
And we are all of that expert in the community. We have the insights, we know how technology works. So the people in the end don't care if there's some Git underneath, if there's some Drupal, they just care about achieving their goals. So, um, for some people, this might be just the first step. For me, it's the beginning of an interesting journey. Um, and I'm open for your questions. So, um, kick it off, first question. Um, have you given any thought to like binary content? Um, yes, um, binary content is a bit troublesome for digging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are options available, but they're not in the primary focus of this project. Um, they're usually stored in large mosaics in a dedicated system, so there's a file system for media, which we um, can use back from the beginning. Entities have a file reference, there's a media entity for uh, binary files, so we could add them. It's not in the focus right now. Um, and what I want, really wanted to make sure is when you think about that, there are companies out there that are using digital asset management so with media files somewhere else. So I don't want to slow binaries in Git and because we have to think about the performance. The Git repository will grow with the website and it might be become really, really big. So the performance will be an issue once you put it into action. But that makes it like more suitable than most of the enterprise media. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so we would definitely need to work with file wrappers right. and to make sure that uh, the content, no matter where it's stored, will be transferred in case of content demand. Who has the next question? Uh, go. So, like for for dipping, like in a nice, like because, like you have, like for example, like I mean, you're basically dipping like HTML in that sense, right? Mm -hmm. For example, if you have like a like a big hole in there. You Right? Yep. Do, do you know of any like nice way of visualizing this? Is there any tool to do this like without like you know like the left right more in a more in a maybe I don't know word highlighting the that sort of way you know? Yeah. So so there are a couple of tools which already work with Git pretty nicely with syntax highlighting and so on. Uh, when it comes to Drupal, we have uh, revisions available, and very oh, interesting. There, the method. But uh, when you look into uh, the relationship of Drupal, there's already a diff module available, which would help for the first instance. Right. Yeah. Um, and the, since we use just the standard revisions which we store on the file system, there's not a big difference. What I really would like to achieve is uh, like an advanced uh, git diff view, which we could see, for example, uh, on uh, GitHub. Yeah. They have really nice integration of how to visu visualize those diffs, and I'm pretty sure there are libraries available which we could embed here. Okay, do we have uh, more questions? Otherwise, I have a question for you. <laughs> yeah? So, you, you're going to use the Git repository as a, like a secondary store, like a sub store for your yeah. system, right? Not the primary one. It always needs to get imported into the database and then use that system. Yeah, so actually, GitPal doesn't care about the, uh, the database. Um, one of the reasons for using Git in that case is that when we take traditional content transfer models, we have to make sure that um, we have the specific version of the content, the right version. Merging is always difficult. And when it comes to a transfer between two systems, I want to make sure that the transfer was successful that the content has the same um, shape over there, the same structure, and uh, is confirmed. Yeah? And this is, those are mechanics which work with uh, checksums and so on. They are already available in Git, and we have to manually, manually implement them when we sync two systems. So are there any parallels between this and the configuration management system? Definitely. While the configuration management system is uh, focusing on configurations, this one is con uh, focusing on content. So they could be some bit better as well. Maybe. <laughs> Definitely. How about, what about, yeah. <laughs> uh, what about like, if you have, you know, more complex content pages that don't not only have a title and body, but they also have mm -hmm. like, Entity references or paragraphs or content that, you know, have you made any thoughts about like 
how you're going to store this uh, relationship. Yes. So the way how people work today, no matter if you work with quantum types, like there are articles which could have a you know, flexible shape. Um, so the entity model, so it works on an entity level, so it always takes a full entity. When we take a landing page based on panels, for example, this could be also based on entity export. Um, it will become very complex uh, when, you, when it comes to yeah, merging of conflicts. When you have very complex content types, like a landing page, I assume. Uh, we haven't put it in action yet, but this will be definitely one of the challenges. Yeah, and I'm referring there too because at later on today I'm having to talk about like uh, pages where it has 25 something paragraphs, mm -hmm. and exactly there we'd like if you could come and just look at that and maybe we could get like yeah. because that's something that is very relevant for complex content pages. Yeah. You know where yeah. how you can actually take all this. Yeah, but in the end, if you just like take the reference, it's yeah, in no. the sense that every paragraph is an entity mm -hmm. for itself with our own like UUID and stuff like that. So then you have like actually small chunks of like yeah. difficult yeah. content. But even Drupal revisions was not handling it until yeah. now in Drupal 8. So yeah, yeah, and it uh, depends it already. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the point. The entity API and all the other stuff underneath Drupal, which we have with Symfony and so on puts us really into a position where we can achieve something like that. This hasn't been possible with Drupal 7, not without putting a lot efforts into it. But right now, it's just a mock-up of existing technologies combined to something new. And uh, the vision module of Drupal is part of the core. But honestly, I think most of you would uh, um, agree it needs some love. Yeah, also, like, the, sorry, the vision doesn't sound right. like the the clustering of content, you know? Yes. So we, we, we could talk to two challenges with one. Are there any ideas yet for um, how you handle links in the text? So mm -hmm. if, if I'm making a link in, in the body field, yeah, that will do a difference, you know? In the content, it's just an H um, node like something. Yeah. If I'm putting it to, to a different system, it's maybe a different node ID. So there's an open discussion in the uh, Drupal core group, uh, which talks about should we refer to nodes. So when you create a link here, um, let, let's quickly do that. Content could be a link, and the URL is node slash one. Um, when we look into the source code, of course, we still have the standard link. But there's an, a discussion ongoing if node slash one should contain the UUID. So when it comes to an export to a sync to another system, and um, we don't know how the URL structure will look on the other system, I think this is a question where it, all, where it comes from. Um, as long as we use the, the UUIDs, we are pretty confident that this will work across websites, but it will be a challenge because Google has to render the URL in the end. So you could work with full links pointing to the right domain, and when it comes to content reference in the same system, we have to use the UID. Yeah. You, you first. <laughs> sure. so, um, yeah, um, the example earlier you showed we uh, changed some content, but did not check the revision. Yes. Yeah. So this is for me a very interesting um, yeah, case study. Um, how would you go further now? Is that for example, some time span where you say, okay, and now we throw off all the changes because it was not uh, committed, or have you go to the shell, or how do you want to solve yeah. this? Because I find it interesting when you play around and you do not have revision, and after some time, or maybe through a button or however we solve this, yeah. I, I, can say, uh, I can say it will work, or throw away all changes and go back to the last minute of space. Yeah, I really like that you mentioned uh, this thought. Um, we have a couple of challenges here. So. First of all, when we modify the content, we don't create a revision. This is bound to uh, Drupal core, yeah? so I just put it into that. What I want you to see here mm -hmm. is actually a GitPal UI, which provides something like a traffic light, like, okay, you come to the screen because no change has happened, then you save something without a new revision, maybe it turns to yellow, and when there's a conflict because someone ch other changed the content, it can to turn to red. Mm -hmm. So you need someone with a twam merging skill. Um, however, right now, Drupal blocks the edit 
of wanting to form this bimodular nucleus at the same time. There's a reason for that because it can ask to change management, yeah, it's change tracking. But when you start in edit mode and create a branch, local branch, just for the user, which starts working on that, it's like a feature branch and the other, the other cycle. If you try to say that in merge back, the system could take care of the different changes, see if there's conflict, or if it could merge those changes into the existing content. And so we could enable parallel editing for multiple users. They don't see it in real time as going on. But once they commit it, and we take feature branches in for duration, we could remove this lock. Also, another requirement uh, of systems where we have multiple editors working on that branch. Like, okay, this problem is right now in the feature branch, just be aware of someone else working with that. There's also a very interesting project ongoing which is uh, called Git Books, which does the same. Yeah, UI, uh, where multiple people can contribute. So, one last question because we're running out of time. So, who's the last one? Go for it. Um, so, mm. so, I think this is very interesting from perspective, like, basically, of like rebranching and stuff and like moving code like, from one, one system to another, like from, from a staging to a production or whatever, you know? Yeah. So you don't have to do the editing there, um, but like I wonder, uh, like if it is really so much of a use case that like five people are editing the same article. And, and I, I, I actually don't have like the experience of like huge like publishing systems yeah. where there's like tons of people working, you know. Uh, but do you see this like as a real use case, or maybe like the thing yeah. is not even that important. Um, so it's used case usually go tackle with small projects, but when it comes to scenarios where companies work with multiple people installations across the world, they have large editorial teams and um, they need a way of not using Git. They don't want to use Git, yeah. yeah, but they want to have reliable content which is approved. And they want to be able to exactly say, okay, who put this change into it on a character level, not on a complete full bit level. Yeah, so, so we are changed that it's not the field, and Git just stores the changes not the full content. Um, so this is a problem we can solve. And it's a growing topic because uh, the internet is about structuring content makes it accessible to people. And so this raises also requirements for the production of the content. Content productions today have nearly the sa same challenges like we had in the past with software development, like coding in a team. And when it comes to collaboration, they have the same challenges like developers have today but they don't use tools like Git. So I, I, I would pledge, don't tell them that we use Git, just give them the benefit of it. So this was the last question, uh, but I'm open for conversations afterwards. Um, to wrap that up, this is the base idea. I want to provide a basic Git pal or Git wrapper module. Yeah? And so I want to open up uh, this uh, thing so that you could create your own modules which inherit this base model as a Git wrapper and come up with ideas. So it's not uh, the case to create one monolithic super module to do this. I just want to provide the basic API and then share the creative ideas, see some prototypes out there to do stuff like dipping, working with multiple users on the same content and so on. So thank you for that. I hope this was uh, interesting for you.
and I'm open for questions after the session.